here we are, unique in our hopes and dreams, yet bound by our shared humanity. We crave mirrored aspirations, seeking chances to grow wiser, stronger. But what's the ultimate purpose? Are we investing our time in transient pursuits? Can they truly endure? We refuse to be confined by societal norms, for we are destined for something greater. So this is our story, how we shed away the shame and put on a crown made of His glory. In the depths of despair, we found peace through Jesus' grace. His love has embraced us, lighting up every dark place. When you start seeing yourself through his eyes You will stop believing every source telling those lies You'll start to see yourself different You'll begin to live different So see yourself defined by the love of God A love that's non-judging, never-ending Surpassing all human understanding Let his love melt every fear, every bitterness For through it, depression turns to joy Addiction turns to freedom Because it's love it's out of this world.
on, shout out praise to Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Shall we all right now just pray? Can you close your eyes just for a second? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Jesus, we thank you. Your word says, Lord, that when we seek you, Lord, you answer and that you will save us from every fear. So right now we thank you. We know that your presence is here. Jesus who sees everything about us, who knows everything within us. You know our thoughts. You know us at our best and our, our very worst. And yet, you love us again and again and again. You save us and you love us unconditionally. So right now, Lord, let us see your glory. Let us see your goodness as we worship you, God.
love is meteoric. His loyalty, astronomic. His purpose, titanic. His verdicts, oceanic. Yet, in his largeness, nothing gets lost. Before I was formed in the womb, you knew me. Before I was born, you set me apart. Your destiny set to be fulfilled in an imperfect little body. When I heard the doctor said cancer when I was 15, I think it didn't really sink into me because it was such a big word. I just felt very overwhelmed and very scared. And at the same time, I felt very lonely. A lot of my peers, they were prepping for all levels and they were in secondary school. So school was the first thing on your mind as a 15-year-old kid, or like your friends. And But then for me, I was essentially given a death sentence, a um, survival rate of 20 to 30%. I had to go through several rounds of chemotherapy and then surgery and uh, immunotherapy as well. And it never felt like it was ending. The thing that really struck me, because it felt my whole future just was being thrown off um, because I was sick and I had to go through treatment as well, yeah. And it felt very unfair. In that valley moment where I was such in a dark place, you know, God was the only one that I felt a lot of comfort talking to. And I felt like, you know, He was there to listen to me and I felt a lot of love from Him. You know, despite like, the odds against me, I just knew like somehow, like deep in my heart that God will, um, He'll heal me up. Can you introduce yourself? Um, hi, I'm Amita and I'm from Level 4. On July 2012 last year, I was diagnosed with stage 4 neuroblastoma. Like the day before the surgery, I felt very um, nervous, very tense. But then on that day, I um, just felt like very calm. God gave me like this calmness and He said that everything's gonna be alright. I really give thanks to the Lord for His healing and right now I'm cancer free and I would like to give glory to God because now I'm healthy and alive. When I watched my video from 10 years ago, people thought, you know, that was the end, you know. Everything was well, but deep down inside, I was struggling a lot. I felt like an imposter because after I ended the cancer treatment, I was diagnosed with neuropathy, uh, which is nerve pain, and then ovarian failure. The possibility of being a mother became very low. Even as cancer ended, you know, the journey just never seemed to end. I think that's when I started questioning my relationship with God. Why can't I just be healed fully? This God that was once so good, so great in my life, it just felt like He abandoned me. He was just done with the cancer portion of my life and He didn't love me at all. I think part of me grieved a lot of not being coming a mom. It really felt like my dreams were crushed and 
and that he didn't care anymore. When I was six, something physically happened to me that I did not understand. But the memories came back when I was 24. In my six-year-old mind, I think I just didn't know what it was. I think I grew up repressing it and thinking it was normal. These memories just became a shock to my system because I never felt that I was the same person again. Every time I close my eyes, I would see a lot of these painful memories like playing. I was sexually abused by someone it was somebody I trusted and what was a friend. It really just felt like it was a huge nightmare. It became overwhelming. I didn't know who I was anymore and didn't feel like I was worthy. I didn't feel like I was loved. I just felt very broken. And I did believe wholeheartedly oh, that I was dirty and I was like, I'm pure. And that I deserved it. God didn't protect me because he didn't want me at all. I mean, all I could feel and like think of was just pain. I really, really wanted out of it. At one of my absolute darkest moments, God spoke to me. He simply said to stay, to stay with him. I had no other choice but to trust him. I chose to stay, to stay with God. God just felt like a light in my life. There was so much love that replaced all the shame. All this pain that I had in the past, I'm not defined by it. I am loved by God. I knew that God, who is outside space and time, had redeemed me. He didn't just want to heal my physical afflictions. He wanted to heal my soul as well. Even when he seemed quiet, he never left. He says, lo, I'm with you always. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God, says the scriptures. He provided the grace I needed even before I knew I needed it. You come in here and you feel like even the very last thing that is precious to you is gone. But let me just tell you this, that Jesus sees you and He comes to you. It was like I was experiencing Him and His grace for the very first time. being conformed to the image of Jesus. So everything in your life, good things, bad things, amen, 
small things, big things, whatever it is, all that is happening in your life, all things are working together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. And this is not the end. I know He is still writing my story. Evita wanted you to know that she really, really loves you. Yeah. yeah. So. I know. We also love her very much. Yeah. Amen. We don't blame her also. Amen. Yeah. yeah. I think it's so important when she knows that mommy knows about it and mommy still loves her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mommy loves you, okay? Yeah, they always love you and support you, okay? And more importantly is God love you so much, okay? Love you, mommy. God is with you. As you said, 10 years ago, you told me when you discovered Dr. Toh, you got cancer, you told me that God will heal you. God is with you. In fact, I'm the one which is worry so much, but you told me not to worry. I love you, Mom. I love you too, my dear. Thank you, sir. Okay. You are strong all the time. Be courage, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm still in shock because I didn't expect my mom to respond this way. Let's worship Jesus. It's just you and the Lord tonight. He loves you. Lord, I 
you put your hand on your heart and sing? I am complete. I am made whole in your presence. Sing it again. Come on, people, just give Jesus the praise tonight. Beautiful Jesus. Oh, you are here, Lord. There is a very strong presence tonight. Beloved, I want you to know that you didn't come to an event. You came to an encounter. You came to meet with Jesus. He's altogether lovely. Whether you are new here or you've been here a long while, can I tell you that you're not here by chance. Tonight, the one who loves you perfectly, He drew you here. Maybe you came because a friend invited you, but it's because of Jesus who's put His love in their heart to invite you. That's why you're here. So you're here not just loved by a friend, but you're here loved by the Lord. And He loves you tonight. What a beautiful presence. You know, it's in this presence that every sickness, physical sickness, emotional sickness, maybe even mental sicknesses, relational sicknesses, they are all healed in this presence. Amen. I just sense God healing tonight. If you are here tonight and you came in with a physical condition, you came in here with a pain in your body, even right now, the Lord is healing you. He's making you completely well. You say, Pastor, then how does He do it? He can because He's God. He created your bodies. And He at the cross, He died, paid for every sickness and disease upon His body so that today you can have life and strength. So right now, if you are here in this place, just receive the healing of God right now. If that's you, would you just put your hand on that area that's painful? Whichever area, could it, be a, it could be a knee, it could be your elbow. If you don't know where to put your hand, please put your hand on your heart. Okay. And I'll pray for you and God will heal you. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, you see all these precious people. And Lord, you see them, Lord, like sheep without a shepherd. And you see, Lord, how much, Lord, they need you and your heart beats with compassion and your heart of love is moving your hands to heal tonight. Lord, touch in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive it right now. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, be healed of every sickness, every pain, every disease will go right now, every discomfort, Go right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ from your body. Oh, I see ulcers being healed. It's closing up right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I see someone here, you've been having like a migraine, like it's like a clamp on your head. I've been feeling pain throughout this week and there's a release right now over you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want you right now just to do what you cannot do before. Feel out, you know, if your hand, you know, is, you know, just do what you can't do before. All right, feel out for that pain. And if you came in here with a discomfort and right now, all right, you don't have any more pain or you feel like it's getting better. I want you right now just to, you know, it's a bit dark right now, but never mind. You just do a big wave, all right. You know God touched you. You, you are healed. You, you are well right now. Come on. Let me, yeah, just wave, just wave. So many hands are waving. 
Praise the Lord. Let's give Jesus the praise. I, was that, were, you, were you waving, sister, what happened just now? Tell. You have a pain? Left? Left abdomen? You, were, you had pain bef before? There was a, okay, a cyst. And it ruptured. Now, you came in here with pain. But now, now there's no more pain. Amen. The Lord has healed you. Amen. He has healed you. He loves you. God is so good. Sister, do you wave just now? Okay, what happened? Now, this is in red here. One week ago, you had pain on your right arm, right elbow. Yeah, you had coffee. Was it, was it good? Was the coffee good? It was good. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm glad. You can't even hold the cup. You can't even hold your phone. Okay, so now? Now you can do this. Can you shake your friend's hand right now? Shake, shake your hand. Can you grab, feel it? Can you feel her hand? No more pain? Come on, let's give Jesus the praise. Hallelujah. Amen. He loves you. You know, I know this, that the Lord, you see, the, the thing about the Lord is this, He, He loves to heal. That's Him. He loves it. He loves to restore. In fact, the reason why He loves to do it for you is because He loves you. He loves you. You've come to encounter Jesus and I, I saw many hands just now that were raised and, and if you receive instantaneously, praise the Lord, but I can also tell you this, those are gifts, all right, of miracles, literally, miracles. And miracles happen immediately. But sometimes, sometimes, the healing takes some time. That's why it's called the gifts of healing. And so you have 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. I believe that tonight you have received your healing. Some of it, you will go back and you'll find yourself getting better and some of it, you have to go to the doctors and the doctors will tell you, hey, that condition that you have in your body, all these years, all this chronic pain, now you are completely free in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give Jesus the praise. He is a good God. He loves to restore. How many of you love the testimony of Avita just now? Amen. Yeah. I know Avita is here somewhere. I, where are you, Avita? You, you are here somewhere. Is she here somewhere? Oh, she's there. She's there. Right there. Give her a big hand. Come on. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Avita. Your story of grace, of receiving the goodness of God is such a blessing and an inspiration. In fact, I'm, I'm not sure if you know, all right, the earlier service where we had the younger young people. Okay, never mind. Not say younger. You are also young, okay? Turn to the person beside and say, I'm also young. <laughs> you also young, okay? But the kids, the kids, okay, we call them the kids, okay? The kids, they came. It, it, it was so precious. I know you'd be so happy to know that you had this, we had the secondary school students and, and the JC students and the poly students and all, they were down there, all right? And they were so blessed by the entire service. We had, we had 150 decisions for Jesus. Come on, amazing. And that's, those are the ones that came up to the front and stood up and all that. So God is so good. And I want you to know this, all right, that you know the thing about Avita's story that is such a beautiful one is that God is not done with her story. And that's the beautiful thing about grace because there is a relentlessness about grace that keeps on keeping on. And Jesus continues to write even her story. Do you know Two weeks ago, she was proposed to. Guess what she said? Right? <laughs> yeah, she said yes. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> ah, I'm so happy for you, Avita. So happy for you. And you know, I, I was I was encouraging her. She was also here in the earlier service. And uh, Avita, I want you to know again. 
just, just this past week, I was, telling, I was telling her, this past week, I, I had a praise report from uh, a couple. They were my youths, you know, I knew them when they were in secondary school. But, but right now, they are in their late 30s. I'm still young, okay, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> Laughter down there. <laughs> and the amazing thing was this. They, they, they were in a situation, they were believing God for children, but medically speaking, they couldn't have kids. They went for multiple rounds of IVF and all. It still don't work. But finally, you know what they did? They came to a place whereby they felt like, ah, oh, cannot lah. And then they trusted the Lord. They said, Lord, we cannot, but you can. Just this past week, do you know what happened? N- naturally, okay, but, but not by medical means, but naturally, they just received a 4kg baby. Come on. So what the doctors say is impossible. God says it is possible. Avida, <laughs> you're getting married already, right? After getting married, you know what's next, right? You know, I see, I see you holding your very own baby. Amen. Y'all believe that with, with me and with her, amen? Praise the Lord. You know, the beautiful thing about this story is this. It's not unique to Avita. She came to a service much like this when she was a teenager and she got to know Jesus. And Jesus has not stopped blessing her ever since. I want you to know that the same Jesus is here. Did you feel His presence? This is, this is His presence. And He's here to restore. When I look at Avita's story, it's a, it's a story of God's restoration. And I want you to know that you have a God who is so desirous to restore to you everything that you felt you've lost. Even things that you think it is impossible for God to restore, I'm telling you, God is restoring. Because He loves you. He is very good at restoring. That's, that's God. And He will not stop until the restoration of all things comes to pass. Are there things, young people in this place, are there things in your life you are believing God to restore? I'm not asking are you a, a Christian or not. I'm asking you, is there things, is there, are there things in your life, is there something, someone you've lost and you're believing that God will restore? Can I tell you, when God restores, it's better than before. It's better. And I want to pray for you right now. If, if you're here from the front to the back to the balcony, if you're believing to res- be, you know, to be in a place where God can restore whatever it is that you've lost, would you just lift up your hands like this? Would you close your eyes? And I'll pray for you. Lord Jesus, oh Lord, you see all these precious hands lifted before you, every one of them so dear to you, so dear that you gave up your life to die for them. Lord, I thank you right now. I declare restoration in Jesus' name. Restoration of lost hopes and dreams, restoration of lost relationships. I see relationships being restored. I see relationship with parents being restored. I see relationships all just mended in the name of the Lord Jesus. I see your bodies restored. I see your minds restored. I see your heart come back together to be whole. You know this song that we sang, I am complete, I am made whole in your presence. In the presence of Jesus, I declare you whole, I declare you complete, I declare you restored in Jesus' name. And all those who receive and believe, say, Amen. Let's give Jesus the praise tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. 
before you are seated, could you just turn to the person beside you and say this, Jesus is restoring everything to you. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. God is so good. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. So good to see all of you here. You are the truly, truly young ones. Because the really young ones come out at night to play. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Some weeks ago, I, I was uh, preparing myself for a youth camp and, and uh, I received this, I woke up with this phrase called restoration of all things. And like we prayed just now, we're believing that the Lord will restore and I, I felt that so strong and I want to show you Tonight, from this passage of Scripture, all right, it's found in the book of Acts, chapter 3. It says this, Those things which God foretold by the mouth of all His prophets, that Christ would suffer, He has thus fulfilled. Verse 19 says, Repent therefore and be converted. In other words, repent means to change your mind. Therefore and be converted. Converted simply means to come back, to return. That your sins may be blotted out God is desirous to blot out all your sins. In fact, He did it in the body of His Son. So that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. You know what this verse is? It says times of refreshing. The word refreshing means to recover and to revive. Are you in need of recovery? Are you in need of revival? Are you in a place where you feel like you got your heart broken? and you can't seem to recover. You tried your best, but you still cry yourself to sleep at night. I want to just say this to you. In the presence of the Lord, like how we've gathered, we didn't, we didn't gather to an event. In fact, we are gathered to the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are gathered, I believe He's the one that gathers us tonight. We didn't assemble, we were gathered. And as we were gathered, and we are here tonight, there's times of refreshing that comes. And these times of refreshing is not just a feel-good moment. It's not just, yeah, I'm here to have a good time. You know, the thing is this, maybe you go to, I don't know, all right, on a Saturday night, where else can you go, right? Like a club somewhere or, you know, I don't know, Zoop or somewhere, right? <laughs> Some of you are like, hmm, where's that place? I don't know where's that place. And look straight, right? You know, we're in a holy place, no... You can go to places like that. You can like lay your hair down and all that. But you go in there, maybe for a temporal moment, you might have a great time. But you walk out of that place still with your problems. You walk out of that place, the next day, you're still hung up about the stuff that you have no answers for. But when you are in the presence of perfect love, perfect peace, and perfect power, the same one that healed Avida and who loves her and restores her, He's here to do the same for you. <laughs> Especially that man there. <laughs> the louder you shout tonight, the more He does for you, is it? No, no, that's not true. It's not true. But Pastor, my voice is so soft and how? Right, I'm here for the ladies in this place, huh? It's not about how loud you shout, but it's about who you've come to. You know, it's this presence. It is this moment that we can be face to face with God and not with a God that is angry. You know, I love the fact that the Bible speaks of how God sent His Son, Jesus. And the, the beautiful thing is this. I talk about restoration of the all things. It's in this verse. Verse 25. Sorry, verse 21 says, Whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all His holy prophets since the world began. You say, Pastor Dan, what are you talking about? What is this verse talking about? This verse says that Jesus today you know, the Bible declares this, that Jesus died for your sins and my sins. He was buried in the grave. And on the third day, He rose again. So we don't serve a God who is still in the grave. If you go to Israel today, 
If you go to Jerusalem today, you go to the place where Jesus' body was buried. It's called the empty tomb. And the reason why it's called the empty tomb is because it's empty. You're right. It's empty. There is a plug that says, He is risen. He is not here. And Jesus blessed His disciples. He gathered His loved ones. He, the ones He loved, He blessed His disciples. And the Bible says that He was carried up to heaven. In the same way He goes up to heaven, one day He will come again this way. And He will come from the skies and with one shout, you and I, those of us who place our trust in Jesus Christ, we will be raptured up into the skies with Him. Are you excited for that? Then you know what? You have a body that never grows old. And a body that, that, that never gets bored. That won't fall asleep when the pastor is preaching. <laughs> Don't jet your neighbour right now, huh? And you can jump and shout and praise and your, your legs won't get, won't get tired. In heaven, there is no sin. If there's no sin, there's no curse, there's no death, there's no sorrows, no tears, no pain. Everything is beautiful. If we have Jesus, that is our final destination. We'll be there. That's the good news. That you don't have to climb your way to heaven, earn your way to heaven. You just receive the one who opens up the way. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus declares that. And because He's at the Father's right hand right now, one day He'll come for you and me. But before He comes for you and me, the Bible says that God is about to restore all things. That means there will be a restoration of all things before Jesus comes. And I believe that. I believe that God desires to restore the rest of our life on earth until we see Jesus face to face. It's a journey of allowing God to restore. It's a journey of allowing God to bless us and bless us some more and to keep on blessing us in Jesus' name. Turn to the person beside you and say, He's talking about me. Turn to the other person and say, you don't want, I take. <laughs> There's a verse I really love in the Bible. It's found in 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I can almost hear God says, Beloved, my darling son or my darling daughter, I wish above all things. You know, if God can wish, He's saying this, I wish above all things. You know, I, I thought to myself, God can say I wish above all things many things. But the thing He says is, I wish above all things, you prosper and you, beloved, be in health even as your soul prospers. So you realise God is not just concerned about outward prosperity, physical prosperity, but also your heart. So God wants to restore everything. In case you think God is only wanting to bless some things or two things or most things, God wants to restore all things. I'm excited. And He loves you. This is our God. You know, I, I shared with the students just now, I had a great time with them because they, they made this place unlike a library. You know, like, what, you know what's a library? When you go to the library, what is the sound you hear? Shh. Right? Shh. Turn to the person beside you. Don't say shh. Turn to the person beside you say, you didn't come to the library tonight. Okay, you can turn to the other neighbour and say, I give you permission to dance. I realise permission to dance. Yeah, give, give your, your neighbour beside you say, later, when the worship team comes, I give you permission to dance. You don't need BTS to tell you that. <laughs> huh? 
I had fun with the, with the younger, younger kids and all that. And I, and I gave them a math class. It was so good. It was so fun. I thought I need to tell you all this because I know that many of you, some, many of you are working already. All right? Some of you are still in varsity, university and all that. But I thought, I want to tell you something because this is to me something precious because you will not learn this math in school. No school will teach you this math. Only in the house of God. Do you know that God is interested in math? Do you know that? He's, he, how many of you love math? Make some noise. Okay. How many of you like think that math is from the pit of hell? Also have. But for those of you who <laughs> love or, or feel like math is from the pit of hell, tonight, all of you here, you will love this thing called divine math. Divine math, math from heaven. It is so deep. It is so deep. You might not get it. But if you get it, you are very smart. Okay, so it's a test. So if you come in here, can you bring the thing here? Yeah. I told you you are going to class, right? Pastor, I thought I escaped school already. You, I came to church to go to school. Okay, just leave it there. Down there. <laughs> you know, the thing about math is very interesting because we have two sessions today. And, and I felt like as we were playing for Zonax, we have two sessions and uh, I thought the Lord said that just like the Bible has two feedings. Jesus fed the multitudes. That's what Jesus did. Do you know He fed the multitudes? Not spiritually, you know. Literally. Like you, can, like, you can put it in your mouth and bite. Like the Big Mac that you're going to eat later after this service. There's McDonald's across the street, okay? Lit Jesus literally fed 4,000 men. The other time, He fed 5,000. Do you know when He fed 4,000? We, you know we have like 4,000 people in this place tonight. And we had another 4,000 early on. So, Jesus fed 4,000. Do you know what He used? He fed 4,000 with, with Holy Spirit. Wow. Somebody said Holy Spirit. Whoa. Yes. Good try. Wow. Definitely Holy Spirit. <laughs> I love it. He fed them with seven loaves of bread. So 4,000. Everybody say 4,000. Very good class. Well done. 4,000. He used how many? Seven loaves of bread. Later on, he fed another group. He fed 5,000. Say 5,000. More or less than the previous one. More. Very good class. You pay attention. Very good. Later, supper is on the person beside you. Okay? <laughs> say thank you lah. All right. How many loaves of bread did he use? Five. So the question, to feed more people, did he have to use more bread or less? Less. He used less bread to feed more people. But that's not the economy of this world. The economy of this world is you have to be more, you, need, you want to feed more, you need more. That is the economy of this world. But with God, you don't need more. You need less. And maybe you are here tonight and you came in here, maybe on the outward you look okay, but you struggle. There are challenges in your life. You feel maybe always insecure. Too much Instagram. You keep looking at other people's lives, right? You start feeling insecure. You know what I mean, right? That's a natural result. And you start feeling like, wow, you know, so and so, you hear this so and so, right? For all the young adults, you're working, right? This, this guy, wow, man, he's closing deals like nobody's business. But for you, so far, you only close this number of deals. I 
I, I met a young person just now. He said, Pastor, just now your illustration spoke to me because I'm going through my A-levels right now and every single one of my friends, they have done all the 10-year series exams. Guess how many I did? <laughs> my friend's very confident. He speaks well. When I get up, I don't even dare to talk. I feel like, uh. I look at my mirror today and I see something down there that looks like this shape. <laughs> Not your face or don't like your pimple, okay? My friends are always alive at the party. I'm, I'm just not seen. And I feel like a... I, I don't know, you know. I don't know what is it that we struggle with. And to be, to be honest, until right now, to be, tr to be completely honest, I'm very sure, alright, if you're honest with yourselves, there are things that you struggle with. You don't have to tell me now, okay, like, Pastor, I struggle with this. I almost wanted to ask just now, what is your zero? And nobody wants to say anything. Yeah, what is your zero? What is the thing that makes you feel like you're always not enough? Maybe because all your friends for the varsity students, they, they get internships like this. But you struggle and struggle, you don't get a thing. You send out many resumes, but you still don't get any interview. Maybe your number of interviews is this. But whatever it is, that is the zero that represents your lives. You know what? Sometimes it can feel like many zeros. Some of you have more zeros. Some, some of us have less. But can I tell you the divine math tonight? It's very simple. You, you're about to get it. I hope you can get it is that regardless of the number of zeros you feel in your life, the more important thing is that who do you bring it to? Because if you bring it to the one, Jesus Christ, He makes all the difference. You don't believe me? What if I tell you you can bring all your zeros to the one? Well done, class. For those of you who clap, obviously you're smart. <laughs> Turn to the person beside you and say, wow, you're smarter than you look, man. <laughs> I guess this is why Paul says, you know Paul said this? You know, Paul said this. He had this challenge. He asked God to remove. But God said this to him. My grace is more than sufficient for you for my strength. Verse 9, is made perfect in... My grace is made perfect in weakness. The one by itself is just one. But when you bring your zeros to the one, can I just say this? He doesn't just add value to you, you add value to Him. And that is the divine conundrum that I'm, wow, I can't get my mind to wrap up around such a beautiful truth. And Paul continues to say, therefore, Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In other words, therefore, more gladly will I boast in all my zeros that the power of Christ may rest on me. So I have good news for you, young people. If you have weaknesses in your life, you have infirmities in your life, the good news is this, you don't have to just live with it, you can bring it to the one, Jesus Christ, and He will make all the difference to you. 
and for you. When I was a young man, 14 years old, I came to this church. I was invited by my cousin. He's one day older than me, so we are very close. His family received Christ first, my auntie and my uncle. And so he said, Dan, would you come to church with me? I said, no. Dan, you need Jesus. I said, I don't need. Because I wasn't, I wasn't a believer at the time. Then you know what he said to me? You don't want to come to church? You don't want Jesus? The girls are pretty. I'm there. <laughs> I'm there, man. And I went. I didn't go with all, for, with, with all the right reasons. Okay? And I think some of you here, you are here not for the... Okay, never mind. Look straight. Nobody knows, okay? You just look straight. So I came to, to church... Back then, it was a much smaller place, but I was seated. He sat me right in the middle of, the, of a long row. And he sat beside me, and he lied to me. You know why he lied to me? There were no pretty girls. Yeah. Unlike now, okay, there are a lot of beautiful people, okay? All right. Because for a 14 years old guy, any girl older than 14 is auntie already. So he lied to me, okay? And I sat there and the music went on. People singing. Then all, I wasn't a believer, I wasn't a Christian. My first time in church, right? You know what happened? All of a sudden, they started lifting their hands. I said, wow, like that. What did you do? What? I was, I was freaking out. Suddenly, sing, sing, sing. Then suddenly the hands start to go up. No. Hey, it's scary for a 14-year-old guy. Never been to church before. I'm like, what are they doing? Right? I'm trying to look, no, where the hand's pointing to? Like, <laughs> so I was right there. Hands were going up like this. Okay, well, I won't scare you the details, but this lady was not wearing sleeves. <laughs> and I was not pubertized, you know what I mean? I was 14. I haven't gone through puberty. I'm short. And my eye level is right at her armpit. You know? It was a horrific first encounter to, to church, okay? I pray that your, your experience coming to church won't, it's not like that. That's why we make it a point, all right, to have experience, like wonderful experience for you. Especially if you're new, we welcome you. Those of you who are new, we welcome you tonight. Come on, give them a hand. That's why we got coffee. We put coffee in your hands, right? Like the lady found out just now, the coffee was pretty good. Later on, there's still coffee, so help yourselves, okay? All right? But in that service, though I was kind of freaked out, but later on, there was a, a man that got up. He was all dressed in white. Something about him. And he got up there and he took over the mic and he started speaking. And he started talking about how he struggled when he was a student even in secondary school, he struggled with a condition. Alright, he stutters. And he was, uh, uh, cannot even speak. He said he can't speak to save his life. And he had a very sadistic teacher that would get him, alright, to stand up in, in the class. To read. Just so to embarrass him so that his face would get flushed and blushed. And all the girls would laugh. And the teacher would laugh. Evil, right? But he said this. He said that this, he had a stuttering condition, but then he asked the Lord, he said, he told the Lord this, Lord, if you can use someone with a stutter to serve you, use me. And God answered his prayer. In fact, God took this young man, touched the very thing that is a weakness in his life and made him a pastor and a preacher. And he is Pastor Prince. If you come to church long enough, you will see him. Maybe you might see him tomorrow. Same place. Or maybe next week. I won't tell you when. But you, you know, you keep coming, you will see him. And he said this, 
that grace is multiplied, especially in the place of weakness. Where sin abounds, grace superabounds. Where sin abounds, this area is a weakness, grace superabounded. Today, he's preaching to millions. That day, something about his words just captivated, captivated a, a 14-year-old young boy. And just was they're just transfixed by his words. And then he said this. At the end of the sermon, he said this. If you want Jesus, come up to the front and receive. Do you know what happened? In fact, the very funny, he was not even coming up. He said, if, if you want Jesus, all right, just put up your hand right now. I don't know what, no, I don't know what happened. The very thing that I was freaked out by, I did. <laughs> I found my hands just, my hands just went up and I, I started tearing up. I said, would you come to the front? And I walked up, I walked straight up to the front and I was there with others. He led us in a prayer and from that moment, my life was never the same. And I never, I never realized how important that moment will be to me because down the road, Years down the road, do you know what happened? Five years down the road, my dad, okay, before, you, before that, okay, I went home that day after I received Christ. I went home and my dad and my mom, they, when they found out I became a Christian, I received Christ, I can still, I can, I can still see it vividly. They, my mom cried. She's Hokkien, so she, she cried and she said this, Why can't you see you? See you! You know what that means? My son is dead. He died, he died, my son just died. I just, I, I just went to church, how did I die? I never realised, you know, that, that meant that much to, to them. And my dad took the bell and started hitting me. Yeah, it happens. So my dad hit me, picked up the phone, called my uncle. And I can tell you this, with all the Hokkien vulgarities, right, that came out of his mouth, he cursed God, he cursed Jesus, he cursed the church, he cursed my uncle, he cursed my cousin, whatever you can imagine, he cursed. Slammed the, the phone down, kicked me out of the house. That night, I was downstairs, my apartment block, and I was crying. In the morning, I was crying tears of joy and peace. The night, I'm wondering what's going on. But that night, do you know what happened? I saw a picture of my mom and my dad, both lifting their hands. To Jesus. You ask me uh, to make sense of it, I don't know, I don't know how. But five years down the road, my dad got a very tough news that he had only a few months to live because of cancer. So at that point in time, he's not a Christian. He shut himself in his, in his room, refused to talk to any one of us, I hardly saw him. But it's one of the services much like this. When Pastor Prince was leading and he said, there are people in this place, you are believing God for the healing of cancer and for the healing of cancer in your loved ones. You stand up right now. I stood up. I got up. And as fast as I stood up, I sat back down. You know why? Because there was a video tape, right? and some of you, what is a video tape? <laughs> DVD, what's a DVD? <laughs> you know what I saw? I saw replaying in my mind, my dad scolding all the vulgarities, cursing God, cursing Jesus. And I thought to myself, you know what I thought to myself? I thought to myself, why would God want to heal a, a man like that? Why would God want to heal someone who hates Him? Why? And right there and then, you know what Pastor Prince said? He said this. He said, if you think that the one you're praying for to receive healing, if you think they don't deserve it, you stand up right now because healing is a grace gift. And grace means you get the good you don't deserve. I stood up and I lifted up my hands. I received, that night I went home, I, I saw my, my dad's uh, door open, I went in, I sat with him, 
Long story short, I said that you're in the fight of your life. Just now I went to church. I was half expecting him to like hit my head or something. There was nothing. I said, my pastor prayed for you to be healed. Can I pray for you? And he nodded. I held his hand. I'm not a pastor at that time. I'm a young person, maybe like your age. I was probably about 19. Some of you are 19. But I held my dad's hand. I said, Jesus, just heal my daddy. I know you can. Heal him, Lord. Amen. And by then, I look at him, his tears. There's tear, there are tears coming down his face. And I said, Daddy, you know what? I believe you will not die, you know. You're about to face something so intense. You can't go through this yourself. You need Jesus. Can I pray for you to receive Jesus? You know what he said? Yes. You know, beloved, I tell you this, I had the privilege of holding his hands. You ask me how to say the prayer, I don't know, no. I just try to remember. I said, okay, there you just say this. He said, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. I know you're with me in Jesus' name. And by then, you know, I looked at him, right? He looks like a different man. There were tears flowing down his face. And I can tell you this, months later, I can, I, I'm happy to tell you, the doctor said, you know, this, this day is supposed to be the day you leave. But that was the day the doctors declared him completely cancer-free. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. He's a good God. So remember, grace is unmerited, unearned favour that comes from God. It is you getting the good you don't deserve. If you're seated here and you think you don't deserve the good things in life, hey, you're right. Because you and I, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If you're honest with ourselves, we don't deserve anything good. But the good news is this, that God loves you and He gave up His only Son so that whosoever believes in Him will never die but have everlasting life. And you get the good you don't deserve. That is grace and grace is not a teaching, it is not a, a, a doctrine, it's not a theory. Grace is a person. His name is Jesus. The people heard Jesus gladly. And Jesus loved them gladly. This is why you're here tonight. The world is a broken place. The world is full of trials. If you are working right now in, in your company or whatever it is out there, it is still very much a dog-eat-dog -dog world. So there are a lot of challenges out there, but I pray in Jesus' name that tonight, maybe for the first time in your life, you've come into a place that declares to you the good news. And the good news is this, that you have a God who loves you, who desires to restore to you everything that you've lost and write your story and change your life, transform your life into a trophy of His goodness and grace. Amen. You know, we had this theme. This, the theme of this, this event is called Out of This World. You know, Jesus, the Bible talks about how He's not of this world. But He was born into this world. God gave Him God sent His Son to come to this world. Do you know what's the reason? So that He can save all of us. You know, there are two individuals in the Bible that were caught, one man and one woman, caught in a world of pain. And they were in such pain that they cannot break out of it themselves. You know, when Jesus was walking on earth, there was a man, the Bible says, he was demon-possessed. 
He was so demon-possessed. Do you know what? Every night and day, he would cut himself and he would cry, wail and cry. They tried to chain him down. He would break, up. They'll break, he'll break free of the chains. And he's a man that does not have peace. The Bible says he, he doesn't even have a place to stay. He made his home among the tombs. Tonight, you go home, you have a bed to sleep on, you have a house to stay in, a roof over your head. But this man, he was so demon-possessed and so broken down and so sad, he has nowhere to go. And night and day, he will cry. He was, on the other, he was from the other side of the Sea of Galilee and Jesus was on this side. And can, you, can I just tell you this? That night and day, when he cried out in pain and in misery and in agony, the people around there will endure his cry. But do you know that his cries reach across the sea to a man whose heart is full of compassion? And Jesus' heart, the Bible says, is full of compassion. And he will not just leave this man alone. That's why he told his disciples, we we're going to get into the boat and we're going to sail across to the other side. And when, we, when he sailed across to the other side, you know, the, the, you know what? It's so beautiful because he got out the boat. And when he got out the boat, the man came, the demon-possessed man came, fell at his feet and worshipped him. Imagine that. A man so demon-possessed. But you know what? Even if a person is so demon-possessed, he can still recognize Jesus. And young people, you made it here tonight. The enemy would not have you come to Jesus, but you're here tonight. That means that Jesus has power over the enemies in your life. And that man fell before Jesus and worshipped Jesus and Jesus looked straight, not at that man, looked into the, the devils that were tormenting this man and said, what is your name? Not that Jesus needed to know the name, but He asked the name so that you and I today, when we read the Bible, we know it's not one devil. It is a legion. The devil spoke up like, oh, my name is Legion. Legion means 2,000 at least. Can you imagine a man with 2,000 devils in him? That explains why he cuts himself, cries every night. That's him. And the devils begged Jesus. You know what, he, what they begged Jesus? The devils begged Jesus not to send them down to hell, but into the swine, into the pigs that were down there. Because they were on the Gentile side of the Sea of Galilee. Can you imagine the devils are asking Jesus, not begging Jesus, not asking, begging Jesus, Jesus, don't send me down back to hell. I think even the devils have more sense than some of us. Send us into the pigs instead. Hey, I, I don't know. I don't want to live like a pig, no. But hell must be a real place and hell must be a painful place, a scary place, even for the devils. In fact, Jesus spoke of hell more than heaven. But can I just tell you this? If hell is real, heaven is real, God did not create hell for you and for me. He created it for the devils. But for you and me, those of us who are in Christ Jesus, do you know where we'll be? We'll be with Him in heaven. Amen? Jesus said this, in my Father's house, that's in heaven. There are many mansions. I go and prepare a place for you. For you. So that where I am, there you will be also. Can you see his heart? His heart is that you will be with him in heaven. And I love that. I pray that you see that tonight. And with one word, he cuts out the devils. And the beautiful thing was this. This man 
For a long time, he was crying, cutting himself. Now, he was seated at rest. He was clothed. Some of us, this man was naked physically. But some of us, maybe we, we are not naked physically, but we feel shame. But today I tell you, I declare over you, that in this place, you can receive the covering of the righteousness of God. And best of all, you are seated, clothed, and in your right mind. That all the crazy thoughts, all those thoughts about ending it tonight, like the storm that Jesus commanded to come to a still, to a perfect peace, tonight you receive perfect peace. In Jesus' name, amen. And now the other woman, the other person who is a woman, she was bowed down, the Bible says, for 18 years by a spirit of infirmity. And this woman is bowed down. Can you imagine a, a woman bowed down? And the Bible says she has no power to raise herself. Are you someone with no power to raise yourself out of depression? Then listen up. Because there's a woman for 18 years 18 in, a, in Bible numerics. 18 is the number of the devil because 6 plus 6 plus 6 makes 18. So this woman is bowed down for 18 years. And you think about a woman bowed down for 18 years, it means this, she never was able, was able to look up. She's always looking at people's feet. All her life for 18 years, she's, she's, one, she's walking, walking like this and everyone will just miss her. Because she's bowed down and she has no power to raise herself. But it's one of these days that she, was, she found herself in church, in a synagogue. And back then, during Jesus' times, under the law, women are second class. So they don't get to sit like the girls in front, front row, okay? The girls, sorry, last row. Under the law, women were subjugated. They were placed in the last row. Maybe not even the last row of the stalls. Balcony, what well, even higher far away. That's how it was. But do you know what happened? Jesus got in, He was preaching and He stopped. He suddenly stopped. He looked up. Not front row. He looked right at the last row and said, you there, that girl. Yes, you. The one who's bowed down. Come up here. And then the, the woman came down. And Jesus touched him, touched her. And immediately, do you know what happened? The Bible says she straightened up. Do you know whose face it was? She saw first. Guess who? Jesus. The one who loves her perfectly. She got up the first time. You know, it's very touching for me because you know why? There's a beautiful verse in the Bible that says, Jesus is the lifter of our heads. For this woman, she will always appreciate this verse. Because literally, Jesus lifted her head. And she looked up, she saw him. There is a man, a woman, in a world of pain, but Jesus came into their world to set them free. And He desires to do that for you tonight. Can I have a good amen? Give Him the praise. Thank you, Lord. I want to close with this. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. Are you weighed down? Are you pressed down by a lot of cares? Are you weighed down with a lot of pressures in life? Are there bills to pay, debts to repay, that you feel like you cannot make it? You have no power to raise yourself out of it. I have good news for you. You have not come to a God who has His arms folded. The last picture of Jesus was His hands outstretched in blessing. He says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He does not say, I will give you more burdens to carry, more sufferings to endure. That's not God. I will give you rest. And He says this, Take my yoke upon yourself. 
Learn of me, for I am meek and I'm lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Rest in front, rest at the end. It's a sandwich of rest. You know, the Lord wants to sandwich you in His rest. He wants to sandwich you in His peace. You know, the word, take my yoke, is not, I know it's a bad joke, but I'm going to try. It's not the yoke you order at Yakun tomorrow morning. Okay, I know it's not the same spelling, okay? But this yoke is an agricultural instrument. There is a wooden beam that's placed between two oxen to till the land. So it's very interesting that Jesus says, take my yoke and learn of me and you will find rest for your souls. Rest for your souls, the rest you so desire, comes when you take this yoke upon yourself and learn of Jesus. How do you do it? I'm going to show you. Show them a picture of the two oxen. This is a picture of the two oxen. And if you look at the two oxen, okay, maybe the one on the left is Jesus, okay? Like Jesus and, you know. He's using pictures of Bible times to explain something to, to you. He's saying that you have to come beside me, come close to me, and follow me. Because when you have a yoke, when two oxen share a yoke, they are yoked together. That means they go wherever together. And the older oxen is the stronger oxen. The stronger oxen will move and the younger one will follow. He'll move, he'll follow. You stop, they'll stop. Basically, Jesus is inviting you and me to follow Him. But it's not just to follow Him from a distance, it's to follow Him in close. But it's not just to follow and copy what He does. It's not. He says, follow me by and learn of me. What do you learn? Learn about how kind He is. Learn about how meek and lowly of heart He is. Learn about how He sees you and He loves you. You know, I want to, as the worship team comes, I, I want, okay, before the worship team comes, I want to, okay, let's bring the, the two, two strong guys. I found two, two strong guys in, the, in my youth ministry. All right? They are, the, they, are like, they are like the two cows, okay? Okay, so, you just like this, okay? Stay here. So these two guys, whoa, are you okay? Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> they are two strong guys. This is the, okay, they're both strong, okay? So, but this is the older one, so, okay. But literally what, happens is that they, they will move. If this oxen moves, this one follows. Move, this one follow. Stop, this one stops. This is what happens. And Jesus says, take my yoke and learn of me. One day I was reading this passage and I literally felt like the Lord was impressing on my heart. And He said this, son, do you know that there was a point in my life that I was carrying a yoke and I invited someone to carry it with me. Right there and then, you know what I saw? If a yoke is made of a horizontal beam and a vertical beam, when was it, class, when was it that Jesus was carrying a yoke and invited someone to carry it with Him? I submit to you, the only time is when this picture was shown. Can you look at that? From the front to the back, to the balcony, see this picture. Jesus was carrying a cross. He invited a man called Simon the Cyrene to come beside him, to carry it with him. At that point, in time, Jesus was going up the mountain of Calvary. 
at that point in time, his body was completely torn to shreds because of the cat of nine tails. Before this, he was put to the whipping poles. And Roman soldiers, strong Roman soldiers, took turns to whip him. They whipped him so hard that there was not a piece of skin left on him. He said, Pastor, why did Jesus go to the whipping post? Why must his skin be torn? Because the Bible says, by his stripes, you are healed. It's not for himself, it's for you. It's for your healing. And by that time, he had a crown of thorns. And thorns in the Bible symbolizes curses. Jesus, He has no sin of His own. In Him is no sin. He did no sin. But then why was it that He was judged like the world's worst sinner? Why was the curse laid upon His head? Why? Because you would not have been able to bear it. That's why He took it. Because you can't take it. And Jesus said, take my yoke. And by then, he was so bruised and battered and Simon the Cyrene came alongside. I can almost just imagine Jesus turning to Simon and say, Simon, this cross is your cross. I'm carrying it for you. you wouldn't have been able to carry this, Simon. But I'm carrying it for you. These wounds, you wouldn't have been able to bear it. I'm bearing it for you. Learn of me. Learn of me. My heart beats for you. I love you so much. That is why I will give up everything. You know, Jesus spoke of a parable. He said that one day, a man found a treasure in the field, a pearl of great price. And that treasure meant so much to him, he went and sold everything he got to buy that field so that he can get that treasure. You know, that story is not talking about Jesus is the pearl of great price. You and I, we have nothing good to give to buy God. To buy God. Jesus paid the price, as you see, to buy you back. He loves you today. He loves you today. I say He loves you today. Amen. You receive that love. If you do, just give Him all the praise tonight in Jesus' name. I want every head bowed and every eye closed in this place and I just invite you. At this point in time, I want to give you an opportunity to receive this love. There were three crosses on that hill. Jesus was hanging on the, right in the middle between two thieves. And two thieves, when they first started, they were cursing Jesus. But later on, one of the thieves said, Lord, remember me today when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to that thief, today you'll be with me in paradise. I've wondered before, why was it that the two thieves started out cursing Jesus, but one of them turned around. You know what I believe? I believe he saw the meekness of Jesus. I believe he saw what Jesus said, come to me, learn of me. I'm meek and lowly of heart. When the women were crying for him, he said, don't cry for me, cry for yourselves. You know, he had presence of mind in the midst of great pain, personal pain, to think about the welfare and the well-being of someone else. 
And when the Roman centurions pierced his hands and feet, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. What love is this? There is no love like this. That is why the thief hanging there saw Jesus for who He really is, the Son of the living God. Love personified. And He said, Lord, remember me. And hear what Jesus said to a simple request. Today you will be with me in paradise. Receiving Christ is the easiest thing to do. But it's still a choice that God gives. I can't make that choice for you. I've made my choice years ago. It is your turn. You might never hear a, another time a gospel preached this way to you. The two thieves saw Jesus once, only heard Him once. One believed, one did not. I pray for you that you receive this love tonight. I pray for you that you will be like that thief that says, remember me. I sincerely pray for you that tonight in this place, that you make a quality decision to open up your heart. That's the most humble thing to do. To allow grace to come in and to make you completely new. So with every head bow and every eye closed in this place, no one looking around, I want to give you an opportunity to receive this love, this Jesus. The Bible declares, for God so loved the world, He gave up His Son so that whosoever believes in Him will never die. I didn't say that. God said it. He backs it up with who He is and you will have everlasting life tonight. So on the count of three, I want you to just raise your hands. If you say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I want Jesus in my life. I want to receive this gift of salvation, this gift of grace. I want to receive it tonight. I want you to raise up your hands wherever you are from the front to the back at the count of three. One, come to me, Jesus says. All you who labour and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Two, take my yoke, learn of me for I'm meek and lowly of heart and you will find rest for your souls. Three, put up your hand right now. Just put it up high if that's you. You say, Pastor, pray for me. I want Jesus. I see a hand right here. Hands are going up in Jesus' name. Just lift up your hands. If, if that's you, I see another hand right here. Another hand right here. All right, no one looking around. You just raise up your hands right now. You say, Pastor, I want Jesus. Thank you for your hand. I see your hand. I see another hand. I see another hand. I see another hand right here. Thank you. Hands are going up. I want you just to raise up your hands. No one looking around right now. I see hands down there. I see another hand right there. God bless you. Hands in the balcony as well. God bless you. God bless you. I see you. I see you. Jesus sees you. Just lift up your hands right now. Thank you for that hand right there. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Another hand. Precious young lady. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, just lift up your hands one more time. Just lift up your hands, if that's you. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, I want you, if you raise your hands, can I just, everyone just close your eyes. All right, can I just invite you to just stand up wherever you are. I'm going to pray for you. All right, just stand up. All right, if you raise your hand, just stand up. Okay, I, I want to pray for you. This is the moment for you. Just stand up if you are with a friend. Turn to your friend and say, Hey, I want to, I, I can stand with you. Thank you for standing. Praise the Lord. All right, just, I see people standing. You respond to Jesus. It is you and the Lord tonight. Thank you for standing. Thank you for standing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, just stand up. Yes, thank you. God bless you. All right, no one looking around. Just you. It's between you and the Lord. Thank you for standing. Thank you for standing. Thank you, Lord. Oh, people are responding to Jesus. Come on. I'm holding on to your heart. And oh, I won't let go. That's a 
song goes forth, just stand up. If that's you, just stand. I see you right where you are. I'm holding on to your heart. You know God won't let you go. God is calling you. I see precious people standing. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. It's not too late to stand up. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. God is calling you. God is loving you tonight. Thank you for standing. Oh, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, I feel His love over you. Those of you who are standing, thank you so much for standing. I want to pray with you right now. Would you just lift up your hands wherever you are standing? God loves you so much. He loves you. I see so many of you standing from the front to the back, even in the balcony. This is your moment. This is your moment with Jesus. You know, I, I just feel this. Oh, I need, I need to do this. Those of you in, in the stalls, those in the balcony just remain standing. Those of you who are standing down here, can I just shake your hand? Can you just come to the front so that I can pray with you personally in front? Alright, just come to the front. Come. This sister, she's all tears. Just come. Yes, just come. Alright. Just come. Those of you who are standing, come on people, just clap for them. You can face me. You can face me. People just clap for them. Come on. It's not too late to come and join all these precious people in front. And those of you in the balcony you're standing, thank you for standing. Are you coming? Come. Come on, people. Just keep clapping. It helps them come. Okay, so good. We're all praying right now. The people in front and the people standing in the balcony, thank you for standing. I wish I can bring you down because it will take too long for you to go walk, 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 walk. You know, you might go to McDonald's. <laughs> so you stand right where you are and pray with me. And pray with me. Pray with everyone here. I want all of you who are seated, would you just stretch your hands? I see people coming. Come on. Come on. Come on. Give them a hand. It's not too late. If you are a believer, I want to invite you just to stretch your hands to the people who are standing around you, especially the circle and the, the circle one and two. If you are people standing, would you just stretch your hands towards them or stand with them, okay? Just, to, just as a way of encouraging them. And the rest of you in the stores, just stretch your hands to the people in front. And I want to say this, young people, we're going to pray, we're going to talk to Jesus. And I know this, that you'll never be the same again. He loves you. Amen. Can I, I want to just ask you to just lift up your hands like this. 
like you're receiving a gift because you're about to receive the greatest gift of all. Just close your eyes. We'll talk to Jesus together. Say, Lord Jesus. Everyone pray this together. Say, Lord Jesus. Thank you for loving me, for dying for me. You shed your blood to wash away my sins. And today, I am the righteousness of God in Christ, a child of God. Old things are passed away. New things have come. I am now a new creation. Heaven is my home. Lord Jesus, You are my Saviour. I know You'll never leave me. So I declare right now, with all heaven as my witness, I'm greatly blessed, highly favoured, and deeply loved all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Some of you have precious tears. I feel God's love so strong. You're not here by chance, you know. I, I give you a guarantee. Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And that means wherever you go, He will always be right where you are. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. One more time, people, would you just give all these precious people and those standing a big hand. Amen. Can I invite you all to stand in this place? Let's all stand in this place. And um, we're going to go this way. All right. Back to your seats. Okay. We're just going to go this way. And before you go back to your seats, they're going to just pass you some, some literature and then you're back with your friends again. Okay. We're just going to go this way. Back. One more time. Let's give Jesus the praise tonight. Amen. I'm holding on to your heart and oh, Shall we just worship together? I won't let go. Lord Jesus sing over you right now. I know you've been singing it. You are the only thing that matters, Jesus. I just keep, him, keep on hearing Him say this to over you. He says, my child, you are the only thing that matters. 
for the joy set before the Lord, He endured the cross because you're the only thing that matters. I want to invite you just to lift your hands and close your eyes and allow the Lord to sing over you tonight as we close out this night. You're the only thing that matters, my child. You're the only thing that matters. You're the only thing that matters. That's why I gave my life for you. You're the only thing that matters. You're the only thing that matters. You're the only thing Receive His love for you. You're the only thing that matters. You're the only thing that matters. Oh, my child. You're the only thing that matters. Oh, I love you. You're the only thing that matters. You're the only thing that matters. Oh. Let you go, I won't let you go, and I'm holding on to your heart, and oh, I won't let you go, my child, I won't lose my hope. And I'm holding on to your heart. Let me pray for you tonight. Just lift your hands. Father in heaven, I thank you, Lord, for, for this night. I thank you for the gathering of your beloved. No matter where we go in life, Father, we can never outrun your love. We can never outrun your grace and your goodness. And so, Father, I pray, Lord, for every single person tonight under the sound of my voice. Father, I ask for great restoration upon all our lives tonight. I thank you, Lord, that tonight we will go forth from this place confident in who we are in you that we are yours and that you never lose your hold over our lives and that you are the one that works all things out for our good. In Jesus' name. You believe that tonight? Would you give Jesus the praise tonight? Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for being here with us at Zone X. I know this, this is the beginning of beautiful days for you and your families in Jesus' name. Can I just invite you to turn to the neighbor beside you and say, this is the beginning of beautiful days for you in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We've come to the end of Zone X. Thank you for coming out. Can you help me appreciate the worship team and all the servers and all the leaders? Everyone who's put Zonex together, we honor you, we salute you. Every single one who's played a part this entire day and for the past weeks, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh